My name is Chad Oubre. Um, I am the co-founder of 85 South Media, along with Carlos Miller, uh, DC Young Fly, uh, and you know the rest of the guys that you see, Joseph Newman. And then, obviously, if you guys watch the show, 85 South Media uh, created and produced the intellectual property of the 85 South show that you guys see in the podcast format, YouTube format. Um, so basically, uh, my role includes. My role includes uh, obviously managing calendars, operations, producing the show, um, launching more opportunities from 85 South Media, from the apparel, uh, to introducing new talent. Um, yeah, just basically frontlining everything for the business that we built from the ground up. Uh, and this is Ryan Pham, I'll let him introduce himself as well. I'm Ryan Pham, I'm the tour and production manager for the live show component of 85 South. So Chad mentioned there's few different uh, business lines, but I am kind of uh, in charge of operations for the touring side of the business. And, and that's, that's Craig Graves. He is our assistant director and he directs other content for us as well. So within 85 South Media, we not only produce the show that y'all see, there's different formats that we roll out more content and we're introducing new content as well. So Craig takes uh, a lot of direction and control in that space and capacity as well. And it was really important for me to, to be able to do something like this. I didn't go to a historically black college. I really wish I did. Um, and the school that I did go to, um, the media department was not nearly as big as what you guys are representing right now. So that's exciting for me to see. I also think it's important for us to be involved in media because obviously we understand that media controls messaging. Um, and I honestly believe that media is your elevator to break through to a lot of opportunities that you can create for yourselves, especially in the digital space, in the online space. Um, and I can go on and on, so I'll let y'all get into that, but I'm really excited to, that you guys are, if it's in journalism, radio, any sort of broadcast, man. M messaging is extremely important, um, from tone to context um, to experience. So when you guys, when you see people that look like yourself, we understand what it means to have a grandmother that made us to go to church every Sunday. We understand what it means to have maybe a single parent that super strict and we're not afforded the same opportunity so we have to uh, uh, be guided or talked to and spoken to in a certain type of way so when you have somebody that is controlling that message you can communicate a little more effectively to other people so I'll let y'all go from here so where y'all want to start so Chad in the Hot Friends podcast you talk about being ahead of the curve when you guys were creating content like y'all yeah. were kind of the first to do that yeah. so how do you stay constant with the internet being mostly content based right now our mentality when we created the 85 South show we understood 
the importance of having a platform, right? So prior to 85 South Show, I used to work for Steve Harvey. And this is Steve Harvey at Family Feud, um, the talk show. He was everywhere. Nine, you nine had, shows. Yeah, he had like nine shows at the time. Me and Joe's um, role within that capacity was to manage his digital media, creative, um, social, anything in the internet content space. But what we understood from what Steve was, you don't have to chase eyeballs if you're actually creating a space for people to come to. And that's what he had with radio. So he created an audience that touched some 7 million people a week. And when you're touching 7 million people a week, all you have to do is feed them good content. Understanding the platform and the mediums that you're pushing content toward. So we treat YouTube almost like the Cartoon Network or any other cable television. You know that on Friday you're gonna get an episode no different than on Monday you're gonna watch football. So we created TuneIn to some degree. And then there's a level of consistency in pushing out content on our um, Instagram channel. So I know that was a long version, but I hope I answered, I hope I answered no, that question. Bro, what's, question. The most, what's the most enjoyable part of your job? Uh, freedom. Freedom. And there's nothing wrong, um, this is not to say that n nobody should desire to go, you know, get a job or any of those sort of things. I think freedom comes with enjoying what you do. So I've had jobs that I enjoyed as well, but the freedom to create, control, own the things that we do. Um, if we decide we want to take a left turn, we take a left turn. And there's not too many people that can tell us anything different because we've created, um, we've, we've vertically integrated the company. We don't outsource anything. Everything is done internally. Okay. Uh, my name is Joe Newman. I'm uh, the co-creator, director, editor, uh, Digital marketing person. Yeah. <laughs> Sell tickets online. Um, I run the Twitter, half the Instagram, Facebook. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Happy to be here. I am from KTSU2, the studio on radio. I'm also co host with TSU Today, and um, I'm also marketing, student marketing chair for this homecoming as well. And I just wanted to ask what were the key components of marketing that really launched 85? Uh, the internet gives us the capability to put any type of content out there for anybody to see. You know, it could be you know on all different spectrums of quality. So what we really want to focus on is making sure that our quality is the highest level. And and so once we got that um, that high power talent, and then we put the energy into it to make sure that we present them in this you know the most quality form. That's really the best thing I can do. But I but marketing is such a Marketing, there's a lot that goes into to, to marketing to talk about from like the small technical side and how we sell tickets or how we create views or you know how we um, engage with other brands. Uh, it's, a lot, it's a lot that goes into that. But I, the main reason I think why we're so successful is because we focus on a quality product and we have exceptional talent. All right, gentlemen, thank you for taking the time out to talk to everybody and answer our questions. So with that being said, we're just gonna go Let's give a head clap. Give a head clap, guys. Okay. 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 Good how, many, how many uh realistic views? The arena seats eight thousand, right? Yes, but we put in a forty by twenty eight stage, so it eliminates there? about a thousand oh. seats. That's gonna be like FAMU. Yeah. So about sixty seven hundred. Woo! FAMU was saying get a sixty seven hundred. We're we're praying that it does. Um it was free know, for the students? It's free for the students and, and alumni. alumni. And I'm, oh, I, go. Oh, I was cool, man. I'm always uh where, where, what's Whatever the, knowledge what's we have, I'm always in part that's our people. That was cool. Uh, oh, you know what? That's what smart kids, bro. I wish I was that smart at 19. We just pulled up, so we like closer to the back. I think I said. Right, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready.
shit, man. I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. I ain't been home but about twice in two weeks. I'm tired of packing bags. I'm tired of every goddamn thing. And I want some slow head, too. Bitches out here sucking dick too fast. Too fast. Slow down. Sharp ass teeth. I'm tired of this shit. I'm getting married next week. Look at Cat. This nigga happy as a motherfucker. Man, you Chad. already know. Look at Chad. I don't trust Chad though. <laughs> that nigga be sick last week. <laughs> Every time I look up, this little nigga got sniffles. <laughs> Grown ass man need a Kleenex. You feeling better, bro? Sure. If I hear you cough one time. <laughs> oh, Sir, hey, you did your thing though, bro. I said, oh, oh nigga, I'm a rapper now. Don't nobody get to tell me shit, bro. Yeah, you did your thing. I'm about to get on IG later on with about 20 racks and 20s. Yes, sir. And tell these people I just did my first show for 100. Tell them I'm getting 100 of features. <laughs> you know, that's what rappers do, man. Hey, change the whole tempo, bro. Yeah, you know. You know. All that shit. You know, this rap, this rap, this rapper life different from that comedy shit. You know all that funny shit, bro. Ain't nobody ain't on that, man. Straight gangster shit now, nah, cat. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers gonna ask me how I feel about the cipher. How you feel about it? I blessed you, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nigga gonna gonna ask me how I feel. Like, nigga, you was the one who it was your birthday. You the one got the present. Look, Last you time you seen your now. daddy happy on Christmas, nigga. Never in your life. Daddy don't give a fuck about no Christmas. Long as y'all happy. I'm happy when y'all, if my kids say happy, I can't be happy. <laughs> well, those, why, well, why you, don't worry about what I did. Did you not see what everybody else was doing? I had to do what was best for me. And that's just the truth. Now put it, put it up on the stomach. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll take a seat. Hold it for me. Three, two, one. Cool. 
He like, yo, do you have to uh He said, Who are you? Go down. I said, I'm not like, the yeah, show. DC, you've Go been down. here a thousand times, you know everybody. There is here. no show here. You will really yeah. say that. Yes, he did. He was like, Who like, look, what we need to go to the store? He like, yes. He just wanted us out of his face. Did he chat? Like you was right there, chat. Speak up, chat. You got Ryan, you wasn't there to be white. <laughs> oh, Ryan's white?
I got kicked out of school two weeks before graduation. The worst ever. I'm like, bro, I came this far. My, my mama worked for the school system. I was about to say your mama in the school system. So she went out there, boo-hoo, cried. The principal was like, what? If your mama ain't had this much weight in the school system, I'll make your ass wait till next year. Just cause. You, we done gave you too many chances. I'll just make you wait. All you got to do is wait till the next year for graduation because you this dumb. I'll just make you wait. But, because I fuck with your mama. I'm gonna let you back in. But nigga! I swear I'm never gonna prove the DVD that I did. But nigga! <laughs> if you do one wrong oh, thing, bitch, you graduate in 2020. <laughs> Damn, you still would have been out of school. You still would have been out of school. You would have been out of school. But I'll tell you one thing, that would have been a lit graduation ever, nigga. We turn that bitch up. Where y'all going? DC High School graduation. Every five people are not in my grade. We ain't gonna fuck DC High School graduation up, nigga. Look at this shit. I was at Alton, uh, Alternative School. 75 people graduated. I heard this nigga been down here using my face. I found my long lost brother. Same trap. Same trap. Hide your auntie and her best friend. How they daughters? Come on, they daughters. Nasty ass. <laughs> I don't even track all the women. They see me as a problem. They see you as a problem? Ah! You're an old young nigga. Spit in the club and shit. Sleeping in the wall like Tie! Nigga, he don't even smoke. He's that tie. That's that nigga that big old motherfucking beer old can, nigga. Ah! <laughs> nigga, got wine coolers and shit inside. <laughs> In a cooler for real. They go with that cooler. Yeah, go with that. Just put that ice cream. Just put that in the lime. Lime green. Lime green. I ain't even gonna lie to you. He got some white hot liquor. Yeah. Alright. You know we in Houston. I got pints in my cooler. Oh yeah. So you see, them bitches better know what they doing. Yeah. You fuck around. Where we going? Like bitch, you know. A spectacular event is about to go down cause the 85 South Show is in your town. Me and your lady kicked it last night. We was talking to each other, telling niggas what we like. She said she wanna go to an 85 South Show. I'm like, really? She said you already know. Cause it was DC, Los, and Chico. One more time for the 85 South Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh shit, hell yeah, I come take a class. I got a degree, y'all want to let me come take some, get a some free classes. I come hey, give me I'm, a master's degree. Up. For real. <laughs> Am I tripping or is that a fanny pack? <laughs> Can I have a fanny pack? <laughs> I'm just playing good, I guess. Yeah, I got this Mmm. Damn, it's cheap. You guys want to Uber pool home? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> No 
Then the white people are going to be like, who are those guys? <laughs> are they rappers? They must be rappers. They got to be. Thank you. you. Listen, bro, it is too early for the noise. Could you calm it down? Listen, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we performed it. Yeah, we performed it. Yeah, I know. I didn't hear the first time. Oh. <laughs> 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 it forgot to be a trash. <laughs> <laughs> you putting this on company time, Joe? Yes. No, not every show. Just the good cities. <laughs> Just the <laughs> good ones. Yeah. Shit, we don't go to shit in city. Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> Make him stay. Book him a whole week in Jackson. <laughs> Y'all are right, right? Yeah, no, no, I just recognize y'all right. Oh, bro. So that's all. No, no, we good. <laughs> like, what did y'all do over there? <laughs> He got that belt like about to whoop some hands. You already know, right? <laughs> hey, hey, young man, give me takes down my damn yard seat. I'm, I'm not gonna say it again. <laughs> hey, hey, y'all can stop hanging around here too. My dog ain't in all that. <laughs> we clear, young blood? I work with Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Pull them damn pants up. Nobody wants to see you draw. When they see that, what they think? <laughs> hey, hey, if you think you got something easy over here, you got another bag coming. <laughs> hey, it might look easy, but it ain't gonna be easy. Know that, young man. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Can I ask you a question? How many drumsticks do you think you have? <laughs> you ever been in a bed? I mean, like a real bed. <laughs>
individual operations that are all under the umbrella of Radio Five South Media. Well, me and Chad, we take a lot of pride in uh, doing the behind the scenes work, and doing the production work. We were trained uh, pretty well uh, with a previous job with Steve Harvey. He taught us a whole lot about production, how to be organized, and how to uh, be serious, and how to be very professional, even though we're in uh, what can be perceived as a silly environment. So even though it's comedy, we still want to treat it like it's uh, heart surgery from a production side. So we just try to, one thing that we do is we try to stay in communication Constantly, that's one key uh, for production. If you have a team, stay in communication. If you have a problem, talk about that problem immediately, get it figured out so you can continue to move on. So one big thing we just try to do is, is talk and be as organized as we can be. I love to see people get put in position where they can do what they do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, say for instance, this your homeboy right here, and he, he's been trying to get his photography thing going on. You come into something like that, like creating an opportunity might not necessarily be, hey man, here goes some money, come ride with me. But it's like, come up here and network and shoot these pictures. You never know who you may run into. You may run into one of these Instagram models who wants to pay for a photo shoot. You still create opportunities just by letting people be in the presence of the opportunity. And it's all about you know, knowing when to turn your talent on so you can take advantage of the opportunity. DC is one of the coldest when it comes to that. It doesn't matter what you tell him. You can jump up and say, DC is about to shoot a music video right now. He don't take it serious. Like, people don't get that part of it, but he's already, he's always ready to go. Doesn't matter what it is. And like, me being around him, that, you know what I'm saying, that drives me, you know, keeping this 85 South Show thing going. Like, if I have a platform that we know we're doing a million, a million views in three, four days, I'm gonna try to bring as many people around uh, to get some of that. It might not even necessarily be just hand over fist money, but I want you to come and be a part of this opportunity. Bring what you bring. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is. Uh, speaking of what Lo said, from the internal side, um, we're very intentional about the people that we bring around us. So our lawyer is black, our management is black, our agents are black, our DP is black, our photographer is black. Every single person on our staff uh, is a black, you know, so I know you see, when you look at 85 South, you usually just see all the black men, but right. just know we got a gang of black women that's doing the executive right. stuff. The yeah. black women are the agents, the lawyers, the managers. You see, see you look at one right there, so right. they're right. very present. Right. Amy handles all the legal, so. And you, don't, and you, don't, you don't realize until you start going into these rooms on the West Coast, in New York, in Chicago, where there's not a lot of us that are really able to represent us. So a lot of us are front-facing as far as maybe talent is concerned, but the ones that are actually making decisions. So that's really important for us, man, and we keep that going internally so that we continue to invest in us and see more of us as being able to make, make decisions and, and, and make plays happen as well. One of the things that I believe in wholeheartedly is not being afraid to be who you are. And, and my theory is as long as you're not knowingly hurting yourself or anybody else, do whatever it is you want to do and stand on it. Because if you can't figure out who you are, there's no way you're going to be able to navigate the world. Because we live in a time now where the internet shapes everything and social media shapes everything, but outside is still outside. And it's going to always be outside. The world is going to give you things that the internet can never give you. So if you don't know how to navigate yourself, then there's no way that you won't be able to get out here and make a difference for anybody, especially somebody that look like you, because if they're dealing with the reality of the world, they're going to see you and feel your energy and know you full of shit. So there's no way you're going to be able to step into these communities. When Fly go back to his neighborhood, they know what he's saying is real because they feel it. They know he's walking in it. It's not something that I'm just coming back showing or saying because it sounds good. Like when people see me when I go home, they're like, man, we love what you're doing because I know where you come from, and I know you're the same dude when you was standing out here on the side of the street with us. So if you can be that person wherever you come from, be prideful of that, but you gotta be prideful of yourself first because there's no way you can ever make a difference in anybody else's life if you ain't making differences in yours that need to make you the person that you need to be. Talk your shit, pastor! Boy, y'all see some real shit? I'm gonna walk off. Walk off, break a walk. <laughs> DC, earlier you mentioned the process. So it's like the process is staying prayed up, keeping your faith. Don't know, don't let nobody discourage you. Everybody go through shit. Don't let these folks fool you, man. Everybody go through shit, but I promise y'all, man, the better days are coming and it really? feels great. You you find yourself crying, crying of joy because of what you just overcame. You're not with you that shit for real. <laughs> 
Make sure you surround Can yourself. Can you get the real? And in my opinion, life is about issues and problems. Everybody got issues. We all got issues. You know what I mean? You wake up with issues. Everybody on the stage got them. But the thing that you need to learn how to do, in my opinion, is make sure that your issues don't turn into problems. Like, boy, your, your. Say it again, say it again. Yeah, make sure your issues don't turn into problems. And what I mean by that is, you know, your battery about to die is an issue. Not having a charger is a problem. You did? So if you can keep the issues in your life, because the world won't give you your issues. Ain't nothing you can do about that. You know what I mean? You're going to wait. Sometimes your tire going to go flat. Sometimes you might have to smack a nigga. But. In, in private. But, you know, you know. but if, you can, if you can learn to manage your issues to keep them from turning into problems, then you won't have as many problems and you'll be able to deal with your issues so easily that you'll find yourself walking in a space where the things that you thought were, you know, were, were going to kill you in your life are now just minuscule. Like what keeps me humble is the things that are issues in my life now would have been the solution to all of my problems five, six years ago. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh man, we gotta, you know, we ain't been to sleep. We just got off a plane and, you know, came straight here from doing a show in Texas last night. And seven years ago, I'd have been begging, like, please, just give me a show somewhere. <laughs> I'm hungry, please, I want to not go to sleep. I want to be woke, I want to be tired, you know what I mean? I want that, like, and that's the thing, don't ever underestimate your process in the process. Like, me and Lo say all the time, you got to embrace the ugly. It's not going to be good at the beginning. You yeah, it's not going to be wrong. Like, nobody even knew what we were to the last episode of the last day of Wildin' Out, season five, and we kicked the old school back. We had done everything that we could possibly do in the wheelhouse that we thought that they would like us for. But when we did what we like to do, that's what separated us from the whole, whole staff, the whole crew. That's what separated us in the building. When we went on stage, we weren't thinking about what we were doing. We were having fun as friends. That's what made Carlos and Chico. And we're still living off that moment right now. Like that was an organic moment that we showed between us and people know that we're real friends. Like we're not faking this. And that's why the 85 South Show works. I'm a fan of Chico Bay, I'm a fan of DC Young Flat. Like the things that we talk about on stage, these things we were gonna talk about anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like this was gonna get sick. We might as well get money for it, because it's like this is real. Everything that you see on 85 South Show is real. DC might, he might show up one day and wild out with no shirt on and throw the microphone down the fucking hall. We know he wrong, but we're not gonna tell them people that, because that's our though. You know what I'm saying? So be prepared for those moments. Don't never think that it won't happen to you. Don't play with it. I came from the hood, I come from the struggle. We don't get them opportunities. So any opportunity, go grab it. Part-time job, you might want a full-time, but guess what? You got the part-time. That's so awesome. Hold the part-time. Part-time at night like a full-time. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> Real talk. Right. You know you got to. Hey, Put it in your code and be uh, thankful. Great. You want to do any don't be afraid to, to hear the word no either. Like, no, you shouldn't be concerned with no, because if some motherfucker tell you no, it's only two things you got to figure out. One, whatever you ask for not happening, and two, how you feel about it. That's it. The yes is what requires your energy. Because if you ask me to do something, I tell you no, it's not gonna happen. But if I tell you yes, now the process starts. Uh, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do it the right way? How am I gonna accomplish this? How am I gonna make sure that my brand or whatever it is that I'm doing is represented correctly? So your energy is only should be concerned with the yeses, and you're only gonna get to the yeses if you don't let the noes make you quit. That's right. I would say uh, kind of what DC said, take advantage of your opportunity. This generation, you guys have a lot of different ways to find opportunity. The way that I got connected in the entertainment industry is through uh, Craigslist. I, Applied on Craigslist, got an internship, and through that, through my internship coordinator, I was able to meet people who put me in connection with Steve Harvey. And that's how I got connected with DC. Um, and DC probably don't know this. And so, and so Chad took advantage of the opportunity when I started working for Steve. He would just come in the office. He didn't even have a job. He wasn't even getting one. He would just come in, and people would see him and try to figure out something for him to do. And, you know, he found a way and he started working with us by taking advantage of the opportunity.
And another thing. Look at Chad creating opportunities. Yeah, for himself. Bro, you put out his case no credit. He put on his flag and came to the office. Every day he's showing up. And, it, and, and this is where showing up can get you. And then with, with uh, DC taking advantage of another opportunity, me and Chad, as he said, took over Steve's uh, Facebook, Twitter. The way me and Chad connected with DC was through Steve's Twitter. So we were basically catfish in DC through Steve's Twitter to connect with him. But right, like, everything is Steve on Twitter. I'm saying, my mom, Steve Harvey, read the book. Oh, look, look. Uh, it was y'all, two light like skinned niggas. Yeah. Got him. Got him. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of opportunity all over the place, the ways to make money on the internet. So just uh, dig, research. Right. Don't let social media be the only thing you know. Right, right, definitely. And don't be scared, because I was scared to fill out an application on career business. So he wasn't. Shut up. And it led to so many things. Thank you all. I'm so That's sorry. it. And we no longer have any time for any questions. Oh, man.